the whole the whole gist of a workshop is to open it up to that problem. That problem that we're talking about in terms of uh, Perlman Spiel, Puzzle Script, or Unity are things that are done elsewhere that we are benefiting from by maybe learning uh, from it together. The Perlman Spiel tool that we use in two classes in programming uh, fun fundamentals or uh, PGF, yeah, and in Game Design 2, the idea is that they help us script and get to some gameplay test beds really quickly and help us see how to implement some game design concepts really um, not just quickly but also without much expectations okay the things that happen throughout the whole pro uh, throughout the whole degree are basically a ramp up of your skills. In game design one we talk a lot about logic and design in script in PDF we introduce some scripting or some of the implemented aspects of of logic. And then you have uh, digit uh, uh, DDA which is analysis. Then there is programming or sorry um, what's the name of that class? The Game Design Project, which is an analog project, and then you continue to go on to <coughs> other, always ramping up like that. But throughout the whole process, we need to continue to bring to the discussion some problems that you'll continue to see no matter whether you're in school, in a graduate program, or in the industry. It's just how do you continue to improve or work through certain things. Unity is one of those tools that I think that are good to learn, and I haven't really done my uh, part of the deal in uh, keeping up with it. Even though I I've worked on games that use it, I haven't myself picked it up as a as something for uh, my own uh, I guess games or my own prototypes. So I've been doing that in the last actually in the last two weeks to be very specific. And it's very cool. I, 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 I really like it. I think it's really, it's alongside UDK, um, uh, CryEngine, it's one of those tools that is going to be really cool. Maybe next, the, the topic that I'm thinking of um, for next week's workshop is a little bit of this entrepreneurial side of what to do, how to set up a business. I, I, I'm not a business person at all, but I've had to make a business just so that I can uh, uh, protect myself. But at the same time, I think of tools and game design environments or um, what's the best, uh, what is it, the ecosystems that can assist uh, a business as well. So you have to set up your business to, if you are going that route in the self-entrepreneurial route, uh, so that you can gain the tools that will assist the business so that the business can assist the tools that you buy so that you don't necessarily waste uh, your income or your... It's, so it's also not just a hobby, right? Um, the, the games that we are working on are definitely not in the, in the scope, and this is my personal work, of uh, wanting to uh, derive an income. I already have an income uh, doing games. But it's also not a hobby because we're using it to definitely contribute to the industry as well. So mm. that's, anyways, that's on a, a much more personal uh, uh, side of things. And I don't want that personal side to influence here. However, the lessons that I've picked up while doing that are things that I, I'm sure you guys are going to benefit from at some point, or at least give you an idea for you to do do it better than we do it. It's always you know uh, uh, improve and you know how they say recycle, reuse. Oh, okay. So yeah. Share is is basically share the lesson, share the 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 love. Oh. Okay. Now, why unity? Unity's got a number of things that are really useful. First, Unity is sort of like a 
it's good at all, not excellent, not perfect, but it's good, it's been really good at and what our, our programming uh, manager, a program manager, uh, Lee Wood, says, it's, it's not that it's good at any one specific type of game, but it's good at the interfaces that it uses to make games. So Unity uses C Sharp. It uses JavaScript. It uses its own Boo scripting language. So you have different flavors of a scripting environment that best suits you. It's cross-platform. You can use it to deploy on Mac, on PC. I don't know that it's... I think it can also... It also has a, a, a Linux web player, but it's for many platforms. It's also not so advanced that you're only going to target one specific platform. So the lack of the advances in, in, advances in technology are in a way, in my opinion, I, and I'm not uh, an expert programmer, although I can program to save my life, not really to save many people's lives. I can, I can save my life with the programming that I do, but I, I can't save a company. So uh, that's that's the way that I, I look at it. Uh, it's not so advanced that any one person is going to create something uh, for the, to, to bring the industry to a new level. But it is versatile enough that the small team and the large team will be able to compete in the same space. So in a way, that versatility and that good at many things, good at, this, at adhering to interface standards of other tools in one environment, in one ecosystem, it's almost as if, as if it pulls at your, your uh, entrepreneurial skills. Game Maker, for instance, is a tool that is very good for prototyping and making games, and it also publishes, and it's also uh, considerably uh, economical, okay? But it's almost like locked into the Game Maker, only game element side of things. Uh, Michael here is... is I, seen the work that he was showing me earlier today, which is uh, excellent. It really is a, a, an advanced level of, of the projects that I, I'm used to seeing in Game Design 1, for instance, but also an advanced level of RPG Maker. He is also participating in Game Jams, and that is there's a big one coming up. Uh, when it, tell us a little bit about that one, Michael. Uh, the following one is called the Global Game Jam. Uh, it's the 26th or the 27th, if I believe. It's a whole weekend. Uh, game Jam, where you have to, the, a lot of developers come to develop a game in, in 48 hours. It, it's an event that goes on a global scale. It, it goes through um, from Puerto Rico to California, United States, everywhere. A lot of people can just participate and uh, at right now, I'm instead of participating like I was doing last year, now I'm one of the coordinators of the events. It's, one of, it's quite one of the events that a lot of, that I actually recommend people to participate to acquire experience. Not only that, a lot of people use it to network with other developers. It surprised it surprised me when I first did my first game jam, and I met somebody who worked who works at Konami, also works with John Romero. So I actually, I actually encourage people to go to the game jams, especially the global game jam that's coming up right now. That's absolutely. Actually, a uh, uh, while back, we unfortunately, uh, um, the event coordinator, Susan Gold, she's the one that started it for the IGDA, uh, used to be a, a, a teacher here. She's now moved on to Boston University. Boston University, I think. Uh, yeah, and uh, and she's a great contact, and so she's she's part of the alma mater uh, here. And game jams, I can't speak enough about them, especially at the undergrad level. How how important it is to network. Any networking opportunity that you get, Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, 
uh, is good if you if you are ready to manage it. If you're not ready to manage it, at least observe it, uh, observe, observe it. Sorry, uh, and uh, look at it from a um, community perspective. What is going on with the community there that I can benefit from? You are when you manage your network. Um, it's very important that you choose sort of like the flavor of the networking that you're wanting. It's as if you're going to the mall. There are favorite shops that you go to that you you choose to participate in so that you become a regular at those stores and they get to know you little by little. Or a coffee shop. Or a place that serves hot cocoa like here. Uh, uh, Mark Dyer has uh, brought for me to uh, smell. Hey, and there's Ricardo Aguilo. There's a... Uh, uh, the, the camera's right here. Uh, so, uh, these are teachers all across the degree. This is Mark Dyer, Programming Fundamentals, and absolutely every other technical class that uh, has to do with uh, good programming practices and design practices as well. He is very influential in Game Design 2, uh, which is where um, here Daniel is uh, um, currently taking, coursing through, and Ricardo Rilo, he is the uh, uh, department chair for uh, Final Project, which is the last, well, the last part of the big chunk of the of the degree. That, that will be your life. Ooh, yeah, four months <laughs> straight. Ooh, yeah. yes. <laughs> it sounds like a joke, but it's totally good. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely. <laughs> so he's also. Uh, on Mondays, they they all get together. The whole like it's what is it? It's covering now six classes. The last yeah. six classes, yeah. yeah the last uh, the last uh, four classes, but were by the time like by the time most like I'm guessing these guys are before Mark, most of them, right? Uh yeah, uh, except for uh, Daniel. Yeah, so maybe except for Daniel, and like Daniel probably had the last four months, but the rest of you probably have five. Uh, months of final projects. Yeah, and so they all get together. So one of the reasons for the workshop is that I want, I want you all to know while I'm here that I'm not the person heading this. I'm just the the person push, pushing the buttons for this to show up. But <laughs> this is a, a the whole staff is wanting you to know that we are all connected. This is a real strong network and real strong family. Of, uh, of teachers and developers and um, what happens at the end is going to influence what happens at the beginning and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So you have a question, you have something, you move on to uh, another class and you're like, well, who do I ask? Every one of us is, is still available for you. And uh, you bring problems that they have at, at Final Project, maybe we can solve them. Maybe at least you'll know that those problems exist. And that's a very important exactly. part of it. Um, the way uh, this is largely inspired by the way that their uh, pool of final project works. And Monday, everybody gets together, looks at every game that's going on through the whole uh, final project classes. Uh, just tell it, like, yeah. So, uh, like Kevin was saying, essentially uh, Monday morning we review. Um, uh, everything from pre-production, which is when the game design documents come in, we we uh, we check them out all together, and we we read them, make sure that uh, that the designs are sensible and that kind of thing. And even as they move on to prototyping, we still all look at the prototypes. And when they're in full production, which is, starts in final project one, which is when they start to meet all their technical milestones and things like that, um, uh, we're still all the way through final project as we move into final project two, which essentially deals with. Um, uh, you've gotten your tech down for your for your gameplay, but maybe your gameplay is not fun yet. That's Final Fantasy Two is where we kind of nail down um, uh, things to make sure that that the games are um, uh, fun is a horrible word to use. Probably uh, <laughs> not horrible. Uh, not horrible. engaging. Uh, yeah, engaging is a better word. Yeah, yeah. Better. potentially interesting. Potentially interesting. Yes, uh, and then uh, Final Fantasy Three. Um, it's it's about finishing things up. It's about uh, polishing things up and uh, and making sure you have something that's presentable so that you can use it as a portfolio piece, essentially. And so, but yeah, Kieran's right. All four months, 
we review all together. So the Final Project 3 instructor is looking at GDDs from, from pre-production, and the, and the pre-production guy uh, is looking at, uh, at technical milestones, and uh, every single person involved in Final Project has an expert, uh, uh, like a focus and expertise that they're really good at. And then um, we share all the knowledge and, uh, and the workload of making sure everything is graded uh, and, uh, and make sure every, every um, project is getting the feedback from multiple angles, not just from one, one source. Yeah, so it, I think in that way it's just crucial that the behave, that behavior not only is what we use, but that maybe you guys also learn to... Uh, I, I've always seen uh, collabor collaboration as a holy grail of game development. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I mean, I'm, and that is absolute, very clear that we, that you guys, we all agree that it's I not programming. Pro <laughs> no, it's not programming. Come on. Now, that you guys code the holy grail for us to find, yes. But uh, it, it's not plagiarism, it's not like that. We always credit our, our sources and all that. But collaboration is absolutely, you know, there's got to be a better saying, not just like a, uh, if we see cars because we stand on the shoulder of giants, but if we defend the horde is because we hold hands together really, really well, you know, something like that. <laughs> Anyways, so today's thing that we're going to try and do, and I'm here ready to fail, okay, is... Uh, is Unity showing you the at least how to open Unity and, and set up a small, tiny little project and also uh, create a state machine, which is a very useful way of, um, of organizing uh, procedures and, and maybe a conditional, temporal, whatever kind of way that, that it goes through every state. Um, it's a machine that has different states, and the way that those states move from one state to the other is what matters. So that's what one of the things that we can do here. Um, I'm, I'm. Oh, I have to introduce a, a new person, Aaron. Okay, showing broadcast. Okay, I'm going to eject you. Yes. Bye bye. No, I don't want to block. Bye bye. You don't oh. want to block this time. No, no, it's just, it's just the guy over there, the other computer over there. All right, so here's the things that you will want to get. Uh, if you haven't installed Unity already, go ahead and download it. It's going to take a little bit, but while it's downloading, you can look at how we're going to set up the project or load it up. Um, also, uh, make sure you keep... Uh, if you have two monitors, that's really good. If you're working on the Mac side, or also Windows has a multiple desktop type... Uh, uh, Workflow, try and set that up because uh, you're gonna have this is a, a, a multi environment uh, ecosystem. You're going to have the coding side, which is what shows you the script, and the IDE for the scene or where you're going to be having all the well the name pieces. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, how many of you have that already? Have uh, Unity installed? Uh, uh, I have it on my Mac partition, and I'm on my Windows partition at the moment. Okay. So I have to, down to re-download, but I'm okay. I'm okay. If you have to go over to the other side and come back, well, go ahead and do so, because it's uh, this will all be well recorded for however long Google keeps us here, and then uh, and we're gonna get kicked out or whatever. But this is going until 10 p.m. tonight, so. Okay. So I just I'll just um change partitions and and start from there. No worries. Yeah. yeah you'll okay. see. I'll, I'll review okay. anything you need real quick. All right. All right, so I'll just come back using the, the link that was given to me in the email, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going back to the Mac partition. I'll see you guys. Okay. So, uh, Mark, do you want to talk a little bit about state machines? Or? Yeah. Uh, how do I get to the, uh, uh, the drawing tool in here? Uh, it's one of the apps here. You know which one it is. Uh, it's probably... Here on the more uh, scoot and doodle. Uh, that sounds. That sounds like a game. What you were talking about the. Found the drive. Like on the little drive icon, it's like the, the triangle. You know, oh, that. right. Yeah. Uh, 
There's a drawing. Create shade sketch. Yeah, there you go. Whew. I see your email address. All right, so I'm starting up a uh, uh, shared sketch pad. Be right back. Hopefully it's showing up. Can you guys see it? Yes. All right, cool. So uh, what is what a state machine is uh, in short is it's a uh, kind of logical construct where you have something. It doesn't have to be uh, like not not necessarily like an entire uh, program, but it could be some smaller piece of a program. Uh, with uh, different states that it can be in. And uh, in formal, the uh, sort of formal uh, drawings of state machines normally represent each state as a, a circle. And uh, I'm very slow at drawing these, even with a computer. Uh, and let's see, I want to I give each one of these a, a number. Actually, let's make this bottom one and one. I want it to be the number, not the, uh, the whole thing. All right. And uh, each state uh, will also have a, uh, a transition. Let me make these numbers bigger. And the transitions are normally uh, represented by uh, by arrows. So this is this would be a, a, an example of a state machine. None of none of the transitions have names for this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna convert this into an example for something that uh, hopefully kind of makes sense. So uh, let's say this is a state machine. <laughs> yeah, uh, a player in a fighting game. And uh, the default state, uh, standing, is going to be here. So standing is uh, state 1. And uh, state 2 is going to be uh, in the air, so jumping. So the two transitions, then, are uh, jump and uh, fall. So uh, jumping uh, moves your guy from the standing state to the jumping state, and falling uh, and hitting the ground will move you back into the uh, standing state. Uh, this is kind of abstracted a little bit, because uh, in, in a regular game, there's going to be a whole bunch of... Uh, there's a different state for going up, being at the peak, and then uh, coming down, because uh, in a fighting game, there might be a, a different animations and effects for those. Mm -hmm. This is a very... Uh, abstract uh, representation of that. So these other states over here, uh, this transition is going to be uh, get punched. So uh, you can... <laughs> exactly. So when you get punched uh, and you're in the air, uh, you go into the uh, uh, falling hard. So now instead of jumping, you're just you're just falling uh, through the air. So in a fighting game, uh, they usually have a different animation when you're in the air when you get hit versus on the ground when you get hit. So uh, there's also going to be a fall uh, transition for this, and that sends you to the uh, 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 laying down state where your guy's knocked down on the ground. Hold on a second. Add, put on these people, click on that, and go... Um, Show and broadcast that one as well. All right. And, uh, okay. And uh, so uh, this get punched transition is already is also going to uh, be used for uh, standing to laying down. Assuming your guy uh, gets knocked down in one punch. Again, like in a in a in an actual fighting game, the state machine is going to be a lot more complicated. And uh, <coughs> stand up is the uh, uh, transition that takes you from laying down to standing. Now, one important thing to notice about this is uh, this jump action that the player can do, uh, there's no jump transition for any of the other states, so you're only allowed to jump when you're in the standing state. 
And uh, that seems obvious from a design perspective, but it can be helpful to represent it as a state machine because now you know when you program the state machine that you're not allowed to switch into the jumping state from anywhere except from the standing state uh, so far. And uh, so these are the two kind of user-controlled states, and getting punched will send you over to the other half of the state machine, and you just need to wait it out for you to fall and then stand up, and then you can do user actions again. So uh, when you have state machines like this, and this is a very simple one, uh, if there is a game where, uh, actually, let's add let's add one for uh, punching. Uh, so we'll have a, a punching state over here too, and I'll just call it state five. Oh, that one's going to be interesting. Yeah. So uh, you can punch when you're standing, and you can uh, uh, punch when you're jumping. But it's a different type of punch, so I actually need to make two different punching states, like the, the air punch. Hmm. And it's a red. And you'll you'll notice that uh, the state machine starts getting uh, really complicated when you start adding more stuff. So when you're in the air and you're air punching, depending on how long that punch lasts, you might uh, fall and hit the ground before the punch is over, or it may end and you're just uh, remain in a jumping state. And on top of that, uh, I'm not going to draw those uh, these other transitions because uh, it's going to make this really messy. But even while you're punching, you might get <laughs> punched. Uh, like if your punch is shorter than the other guys, or the other guy's under you, so he's like. Uh, punching you in the gut and you just whiff over his head. Uh, so both of these uh, states are going to need to point over to there. And you can kind of solve this complexity problem by layering state machines inside each other. Uh, and what I mean by that is I could uh, possibly draw a, uh, a circle around uh, all of these at once and then say no matter what state the player is in, uh, if they get punched, they're going into uh, one of the uh, I got hit states. Uh, and I think I've uh, already uh, hit the cap of my ability in this uh, drawing program to, uh, to draw stuff. Uh, hmm. I think if I could... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to get this to turn off the, uh, the, what? the background color. Oh, here we go. There we go. So if we were to organize it where this is one whole thing, then getting punched would send you into something else. Uh, yeah, if you remember the... Well, something I want to say about this is that because a system is complex and um, like in a, in a fighting game, think of Street Fighter that's been going on for... for 25, 30 years, right? Yep. Every awesome. single one of those actions, for every single one of those characters, in a way, there is a fully complicated system that can be uh, outlined in a state machine uh, uh, way. That can be in a diagram that can be interconnected for to represent each one of those players. So for Chung Li, maybe the punch doesn't come into effect. It only, uh, her kicks only come into effect when she is in the air. Uh, same thing goes for every single special move. And that you, though you may not uh, design it that way or draw it out, it doesn't mean that it isn't going to get coded with that level of complexity. In other words, get used to thinking like this because it will be coded even more specifically than what you may be thinking. So the more granular that your thoughts can be about these machines and these interactions, the better that the, the scripting uh, process will, will go. You will know, okay, you're in the get punch uh, state, uh, or sorry, transition, <clears throat> or you'll get to the falling hard state. Uh, these are, they, uh, throughout development, they become uh, code names and, and things that 
are addressed very specifically. You do not confuse getting uh, shot in the head with getting shot in the in the arms. You don't confuse um, trading in uh, money from getting money out of the bank or selling or losing money when you when you drop it or something like that. Those are very specific labels that you use, and this is where they begin. So one other thing to keep in mind with a state machine like this, the the transitions uh, are are meant to encode something that's an instantaneous transition between two states. Uh, so if if you want to describe something uh, that happens over time, that either needs to be part of the state itself or multiple states. So. Um, one thing that, that might be true is when you're punching, uh, there's a number of frames that it takes, and there's invulnerability frames and other stuff like that. Uh, that might be encoded as multiple uh, states as a subset of punching. So the punching state may have its own little state machine, which is like, uh, here's the, the startup, and then here's the actual part where the, the damage is being dealt, and then... Uh, and then there's a, a portion of time when you can cancel out of it and other news. The fighting games are so complicated. Uh, You're great. I love it. Everything. And uh, it, people spend a lot of time creating engines to kind of uh, handle a lot of that stuff. And there's this whole vocabulary of all the different ways that things interact. And people kind of expect that stuff now. It gives. It's what gives fighting games their, uh, their modern feel. And if you yeah. don't play an old one, uh, especially a bad old one, they don't they don't have this sort of stuff, this sort of like transitions and states that, that people expect them to have. But you can also see how how the fighting games that we have today, the reason why it, it, I think in a way they're worth to continue to develop is because the systems are so large and so complicated already that there's a lot of worth in the in the transitions that that exist within them. Think about a games that like Street Fighter that are incredible incredibly well-established franchises, but think about all the wealth of interactions that exist inside that game alone. Uh, that's over over 30 years. How many different characters have different interactions, different weighted systems, different balancing tipping points, mechanics that are applied to the same type of move in this level versus this other level? Think about a game that... Uh, can you give me an example? I'm thinking of an example right now, but of another game that has... In an incredible large list of these small types of interactions. Dead or Alive 5 or Killer Instinct? Okay. Killer Instinct. Okay. Outside of the fighting game, give me another one. Mm, um, any sort of FPS, there's like reloading animations, there's like throwing grenade animations, there's like any anything like that, right? Isn't that the same thing? Like throwing grenade and reloading aren't those the same kind of states as like falling and jumping and stuff? Yeah, those are yeah. very calculated uh, states, or, or you can trans uh, 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 translate this into a flowchart. But the flowchart is more about how the whole game happens, not necessarily what a state that that a particular actor inherits, right? So oh, okay, I see what you're saying. These are states for maybe uh, it could be applied to. That's a good example of this. This this would be applied to a character, but not entirely not. Not necessarily the entire game. Not so. So this, this one's an example of a, a character, but you can you can describe an entire game in, uh, in the format of a state machine. Uh, for example, uh, most games have a uh, splash screen at the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, then a main menu, and then from the main menu there's a loading screen, and then the game yeah. itself. Uh, so that's already uh, four different states, and nothing interesting has happened unless you really <laughs> enjoy main menus. <laughs> uh, In fact, actually, they use uh, uh, state machines for uh, for game transitions, like the, uh, the pause screen, gameplay screen, or the gameplay moment of the game, and, and all that. That's yeah. Have always used. Them. So, so one thing that that's really useful for is if you know for certain that uh, when you go into a particular state, something needs to happen, like uh, like you need to clear the screen or like load resources or whatever, it's really easy to put that stuff into a, a formal state machine because it, it gives you 
all of the exact points where you would want to hook that stuff into. Uh, typically. Uh, now, you can always write your own state machine as well. And it's, it's actually not too hard uh, to write a, a fairly basic one uh, with uh, just with statements and public variables. Yeah. But most uh, no, AAA games are pretty much always just like uh, really fancy state machines that have like formal descriptors for the transition. Yeah. Give me another, uh, more examples on, on games. Uh, that Turn-based RPGs, maybe. Yeah. Okay. There's stuff, like in RPGs, there's stuff like knockback, um, you know, just exactly what Michael was talking about. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Right. Like uh, like in, in Diablo, one of the states your character can be in is uh, hit stun, which is yeah. actually uh, mm -hmm. shared with fighting games and yeah. how bad it is to be in it. Uh, so I remember in the, the Diablo 1 and some portions of Diablo 2, you can actually get locked in the instant animation because you have so many enemies around you that they can go through and do their, their attack before you ever recover. Yeah, um, um, that would apply very well to um, uh, the Legends. Oh, yes. It would apply very well to Pokemon. Uh, World which, of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. Think I about mean, it. Yeah. it, it Literally just list any game, and there's aspects of it which can be represented as a state machine. So yeah. it's, a state machine's a very uh, kind of generic way of describing how something works. Yeah. The other thing, though, if you wanted to, those of you that just took Game Design 1 and, and or Programming Fundamentals, and you're thinking of uh, flowcharts and all that, in a way, every procedure that you, you know, when you calculate damage or when you... Uh, set the game to a particular moment. Uh, it, that literally gets zoomed into a state machine. It's almost as if you zoom into a particular section of, of what the game is taking care of, and inside of it is, look at this gate, where is it at? Zoom back out, re report this result. This is where you're going to set the character to be. So, these things are all very well interconnected, and I, I want you to keep Keep uh, trying to find where you connect the, the two concepts, where they, they these two go like that. So, all right. Um, well, what's the next step on this? I can bring one next week. I have one. I just totally forgot. It. I don't have even on. If I bring one next week, then maybe fifty percent chance of actually having one. Either one of us remembers. Or we can put this in the middle and move it around. Oh, but we're going to be looking at that. But yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sorry, guys, that has nothing to do with the state machine. It's just us being forgetful. It's our state machine is not operating very well. All right, so... We're going uh, to so forget that state. We're going to uh, move this over. We're going to keep this in the house. Are we... Questions. Please have questions, please. This is not about... Mm. I have no questions at the moment because I have um, Unity open right now. But my only question would be, how do I, how do I make something like, for example, if the player falls through a certain area, then it'll restart the game. Oh, in Unity. Yeah. Ah, you can. Uh, so there's there's two ways to approach that. Uh, one is to just reload the level that the player is currently on. Uh, there's a, that uses the same function that Unity has for just loading any given level. Uh, I It's been a while since I've done a lot of Unity. Because right now, um, I'm just doing it just for the, you know, for the fun of it. Oh God, and, that. and all I've been doing is just like a game where the player just jumps on on ice cubes on the middle of the air. All right, I'm I'm pasting a, a link to the reference for the function that you can use uh, to do that. Just reload the level that you want to restart, and it should do that. Uh, the other approach is to uh, write some code that will change the state of everything in the level back to the way that you want it to be for starting. Uh, it's a bit more, it's a lot more time consuming to do that, but it can be worth it because then you don't have to do a level load. Uh, to yeah. do it, 
Uh, but that involves moving all the objects back to their original position and their original rotation, uh, change all of the variables <coughs> the back to their original value, and so on. Uh, so you'll need to it'd probably help to do a little bit of uh, a bookkeeping for that. Uh, but just floating the level, again, is, is an easy way to... Yeah, that, all, all I want is just like load the, lo the, the current level where the player is actually in, you know. Yeah, so if, application at low levels is probably what you want to do. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Quick, probably. quick results, it'll work, I think. All right, let me just... Ah, I'm opening Safari, I don't want Safari right now. So uh, one, one other word about state machines. Uh, while they can be a useful way to describe how stuff works, uh, it's just one tool that you can use to describe game logic, and they certainly aren't a good way to do everything. So uh, uh, just keep that in mind. We'll, we'll try to keep our examples mm -hmm. like, relevant to state machines, but they, they might end up contrived depending on the well, that making. The, we can tell them about the main, the main problem that I find with setting things on a state machine is that they, they become predictable. Okay, the, the, on, there are ways to obfuscate that predictability, and then you have other types of, of uh, topologies that exist. In, in, by topology, I hope everybody understands, is like the way that the, 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 um, the, game, space. the game space is mapped to, right? So um, a state machine generally is very... Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, what happened? No. No. Hey. Okay, there we go. So. Uh, so. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yo. Uh, video games. Yeah, video games. Uh, so what happens with the uh, same machine is that the topology becomes so locked and so steady that a player says, oh, they're in this transition. If you drop this thing over here, it's going to move on to that, and then it's predictable. If you use a state machine for AI, for instance, if you use a state machine for a player, then you have uh, uh, lots of assets that are for those transitions. It falls this way or falls that way. Then the, 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 the animation style that is selected for that transition to be a little bit more random or a little bit more... Uh, nuance then needs to be even more carefully uh, 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 specified. So then there's a state machine inside a state machine just so that you can get that type of, of granularity. Gran yeah, granularity. Yeah. So, so that's the big danger. Uh, state machines are fairly formal and there's a little bit of overhead in using them. Uh, so if you need to do something really granular with a, uh, a lot of states, the more states you have, the more complicated it becomes. Uh, especially if there's a lot of transitions between states. And there's definitely other ways to handle uh, that sort of system, uh, either just doing it ad hoc, coming up with uh, whatever is working along the way. Uh, and there's, uh, there's, other, there's other ways to specify these sorts of systems, too. Just state machi machines are a fairly basic and formal one that is. Uh, they're commonly taught in <coughs> programs. Is it, so you guys saw the, the map that we have here of the air punch jumping and falling hard, right? Yep. Okay, so here's here's the other thing that, that happens with a state machine. And, and, and the, like he's talking about more formal things. you got to remember, this is, I think, Chris Hecker is the one that kind of mentioned this. He was doing a rant on how certain consoles don't have better processing than others or multi- Multi-threaded envir uh, environments, uh, <coughs> this is just technical jargon, whatever, um, how they're not necessarily better for gameplay. And the reason he says, and uh, I'm remembering this, and this is just maybe a, a, the way that I internalize it, is that games, if you think about this, games are all about specific cases. They're all about what is a player doing now, do something about that. They're always, if you see a physics system, for instance, something that is usually handled by physics, right? All of the physics uh, simulations that the system can, can produce for the game, sometimes that physics might interfere with the result that you as a designer really want out of the, the, the situation. So maybe a physics 
simulation will return this state in which the, the, the warthog on Halo will just literally blow up in pieces, right? But that's not, quote-unquote, fun. That's not what we want. We want it to jump and just do this and hop instead of, like, flip all over the place. So the game code has to go in there and interrupt that very specific moment. And you start creating specific moments after specific moments after specific moments. And by the time that you have the entire system at the end, it's such a kerfuffle of, of connections. And, and having a topology like this is really not going to help you. You're going to need to go into every single one of those moments and interrupt it there and interrupt it over here and interrupt it over there. So do you understand what I'm, where I'm going with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I, an example, not just to use Halo, but um, and I'm sure that you have some experience on that in sports games. In sports games, you may have uh, forever. Uh, what, what was the, the well, new edition? You, you well, I, I, so here, here's a specific example from my time at EA. So <clears throat> uh, the, in the Tiger Woods game, uh, when you're playing through a round, there's a certain number of states that the game is in. Uh, just like when you're inside a course, uh, completely throwing away all the like menu and loading stuff. So uh, the state you're probably in most of the time is standing there uh, at the tee, uh, getting ready uh, to swing. And uh, that state, uh, you exit that state by uh, starting the backswing, and that starts another state, uh, which is the currently swinging. And during that state, you can't switch. <laughs> the uh, and when you make contact with the ball, it switches to just the simulation mode where it's simulating uh, the physics of the ball flying through the air. Uh, and the player has some additional controls in there, like uh, the uh, majestic godlike powers of blowing the ball to the left and to the right while it's in flight, <laughs> or adding or removing spin, or whatever whatever stuff is listed on the back of the box. So that's that's pretty much uh, that that's the new stuff that you can design other than UI. Uh, <laughs> on a golfing game. I, there's, I'm probably shortchanging the designers there, but that that's one of the things that, that's easy to see. It's like, oh, this isn't quite like regular golf, because uh, uh, the real Tiger Woods does not have those godlike powers to uh, add and remove uh, uh, velocities to the ball after he's hit it. It's, it's all in that impact. Uh, but anyway, so you have the, the adjusting your club and angle and so on. You have the actual swing itself, and then you have while well, the ball is in the air. And when the ball stops, uh, there's another state uh, where it does like a little camera sweep. It's like, oh, look how bad your shot was or how good your shot was. And when that's done, or if the player hits a button, it goes back to the, uh, the player ready to swing safe for whichever player it is. And it's useful to separate that into states because uh, it makes it very clear what sort of uh, controls the player is allowed to use in each of those states. And the way that a state works internally doesn't need to be another state machine, although it could. Uh, for example, uh, when you start your backswing, you could separate that into two different states, uh, the backswing and then the forcewing, uh, if you wanted to. That, that's only two states, and you could, you could write that without uh, making a, uh, a formal state machine uh, pretty easily. It's just like, if you're in the state, then do that. Otherwise, do this and uh, allow the, the I'm, I'm making this motion, the, the thumbstick uh, to be yeah. used throughout that whole process. Uh, and we're just we're just looking at the numbers coming out of the controller and using that to do whatever game stuff and and eventually uh, start the uh, the impact uh, and, and the, the flight of the ball. And uh, so there's there's at least four states and potentially many substates of those four states. Uh, oh, there's there's got to be still got to be like what if the player cancels a motion, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's another good one. If you start your backswing. And then uh, you push the stick back up to the center, but you don't push it past. And then you and you just let go. Uh, it'll actually detect that and go back to the player ready state. Uh, now, if you do that in an actual game of golf, uh, you have to hit the ball, or else it costs you a stroke anyways. But the video game is unrealistic, so it lets you do that. Uh, even though you now have access to the entire uh, PGF. Uh, <laughs> rules of playing golf, uh, including the funny ones, like what happens if your ball lands on a mushroom. Uh, I, I think you're allowed to clear the mushroom. 
but maybe you have to tee off of the mushroom. I don't remember. Really? Uh, so yeah, there, there's there's rules specifically like if you land on on or under leaves, are you allowed to clear the leaves without disturbing your ball? Or uh, <clears throat> if you land in a fork of a branch, uh, are you allowed to take your golf club and hit it out of the tree? Or do you are these have real to... rules? Huh? Are these real rules in like actual golf? Uh, yeah, the PJ they have rules for all of these situations because they've they've come up at some time. Or that another. sounds crazy. Yeah. So so the way these rules show up is once upon a time something has happened and no one knew what to do, so they decide and they put it in the rule book, and that's why rule books get longer and longer every year because more crazy stuff always happens. Yeah. Uh, huh. Zach Zach Eiweller, the uh, department chair for design and I have his uh, book. and. <clears throat> GD2 uh, course director. He is a uh, referee in uh, what is it? What's the league? Is this high school games or yeah, uh, high school football? High school football. And they, he's not the referee. He's an official. He's an official. A referee right. is a specific position for officials. Just to clarify. You're right. You are right because that that's what I was gonna get to. There's the rules for the game, and then there's the rules for officiating the game. And both of them are equally complex and full of rules handbooks. Yeah. They, they have their own, like, quarterlies and, like, magazines and stuff with, like, articles that officials write for other officials to read. So it's a whole interesting world. I'm so certain imagine, they say the same thing about game developers. What? I'm certain they say the same thing about game developers. Like they well, have they are game developers in a way. Think about it, right? They're, they're, they're game masters. Yeah, they're just... They're, they're dungeon masters for the... the RPG of uh, football. Yeah, you have your your wizard uh, who calls the plays and casts a spell, which shoots a ball at your uh, at your uh, frontline fighters. Yeah, and you you have to cover every single one of the potential. This is why design is a complex uh, uh, um, job, or not just job, but uh, behavior throughout production. It's not just like I came up with the obviously the idea guy is is a stupid uh, uh, thing to want to get into. I just want to give the idea to somebody else make it. That's ridiculous. That's not, mm -hmm. that's that just doesn't work. Okay, uh, even though some people pretend that it does, the the role is you are creating yeah. the rules and behaviors, and states and changes and transitions. For every single little leaf in the world that you're creating and managing, so at some point they have to come down to the nitty gritty, which is what you see on the screen right there, and some someone has to be consistent or keep that consistency between it. Imagine that I'm the des designer of a game that we're going to let's just do this in Unity, you know, like something jumps, something moves. Oh man, we can't even have <laughs> sure. Didn't yeah. Didn't Michael just have that jumping game he was talking about making? Uh, I'm he um yeah I'm I have it here on the screen. Okay. Uh, what? Well, let's see what what he's got here. All right. Uh, it's, I haven't I didn't do much. I'm trying to like design the rules per se right now. Basically, what the player is doing is jumping on the middle of what it looks like nowhere, but it's just <laughs> basically no. It's no. And these are ice cubes, and what I'm trying to do is get the player to jump through a lot of ice cubes, which I'm going to design the pad, and if he falls like I just did, like here, then uh -huh. he has to restart. That's okay. what I'm trying to design. That That's pretty much what I'm trying to do. All right, let's look at your script. Uh, okay, the restart level script, I have nothing. Okay. Yeah. No. So you don't have any script for your for for the actor or for, sorry for the asset that you have. I think that's just the uh, you're just using the first person controller right now. Yeah, right? that's all I'm doing. Yeah, it, it has all that stuff built in. Uh, yeah. Uh, which has something resembling a state machine in it, by the way. But it's a lot of code. Yeah. Uh, okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, we can do something simpler, and then you can look at it and implement it there. And it's like kids these days. I mean, not. Back in my day, I used to have to code the compiler to compile the code that I was going. You know, it's, it's. What you mean? You've never uh, uh, written code to bootstrap your compiler so it can compile itself? 
I haven't either. People no. haven't done that for a while. No. Yeah, it's it's uh, that's that's a higher level of. Uh, I, I aspire someday in some other universe. I did that, but nope, not in this one. Um, <laughs> it's not cool if you do that these days, anyways. No, no, no one does that. I mean, who does it? PhDs, people who write like COBOL and stuff oh, back in the seventies. You know what? But people don't people don't do that anymore. There's like I think there's probably like just a handful of people who find that, that extremely uh, uh, easy to do. But they have to. We have to inspire for other people to do it because. What they're gonna either they're gonna be like plumbers, you know. It used to be the case that if you study computer science, uh, everybody's like, "Ooh, you're studying computers." But then everybody started studying computer science, and nobody was studying to do plumbing. And people were starting to notice that the salaries for plumbing for an hour is higher than the salary for coding for an hour, because there are fewer people doing it. And the need still exists. Yep. So what are we going to use? Uh, Unity for the rest of eternity? No. People are still going to have to do it, but then it's fewer and fewer of those people. So we have to inspire for that to happen. Very interesting point. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I, may, I may join you guys. Uh, I mean, it also helps being vers uh, you know, a little bit vers versatile, versatile, whatever, that <laughs> if you know a lot of other programs... It makes your it, it, make, it actually helps you land other jobs that a lot of people can't land, which also helps raise your salary. Say bye to Mark. Bye. 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 Later from home. And help you guys. Uh, <laughs> See you later. It was it was fun. Yeah. So no, we're gonna do this. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna gladly fail in front of you. It's okay. No, don't worry, man. Uh, I don't believe in failing. I just believe in trial oh, and error. <laughs> I believe in failing fast. Get, get <laughs> yeah. that out of the way. Yes. All right. So, <clears throat> so yeah, so it, absolutely. The, well, you can always think about the jobs, but that's not... No. I don't want you guys to think. That's something that I'm, I'm really vigilant against. Um, that you don't think that we're doing this only so that you can get a job. That is a goal that you guys have, and I would hope that it works out as you want it, whatever that is. However, the practice of the game designer or the programmer and all that, those are things that need to be, um, and need is the wrong word, that if we uh, endorse them and if we practice them, then the result might be that everybody benefits. It could be that we endorse the wrong thing and we won't know until, you know, some time goes by. For instance, um, Unity is something that we strongly believe in. It might happen that Unity, the company itself, decides to change and, and, and uh, stop making everything backwards compatible, uh, start start uh, charging for licenses, these are things that we can't really foresee. So we endorse that direction with the hope that um, as we discover what's going on with it, it's, 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 it gives us enough time to be agile. And in that regard, studying game design, studying programming is something that for right now, it is Excuse me. It's going to give us a lot, a lot of benefit. Yes. Because um, it doesn't only apply just to the video game industry overall. You know, you could use video games and everything that you design, you learn in designing video games to improve something else out of the game, the, the game industry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, That's absolutely. Look, let's, let's move this into the actual uh, Unity project so I can start one yes. uh, here. Let's see, screen share. Um, let's move this over to that desktop. Desktop one. This one right here. All right, start screen share. There we go. Can you see uh, the, the screen share? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, right now I can see it. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's right. awesome. All right, so this is the main interface for, for Unity. It starts you off with this or different layouts. Whichever layout it starts you in, it's 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 doesn't really matter. It's it's customizable to you. 
And, and However, it, the inspector idea and these little uh, uh, console uh, windows that, that you can move around, you can move them like this down here or wherever. This works out in, in, in uh, uh, different, I just messed it up. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't want that to be messed up like that, so let's see if we can get well, it to. You can always go back and where it says, um, yeah. if you look at yeah. the screen, there's a place where it says. Um, yeah, the I, layout here. Yeah, layout, and just change wherever you want, and it'll just rearrange by your like to your liking. Yeah, so this is generally what it's it's going to show you. There are main things about Unity. First, the scene. The scene is where you drop your objects, your game objects. Okay. Um, Unity has a welcome uh, to Unity thing. I never take it off because I'm or well. I haven't needed to take it off because there's still things that I haven't even gone through. All the video tutorials, Unity Basics. Please go in there and go crazy. If <laughs> you know, I know that a lot of you bought those game consoles that came out last uh, Christmas or the Christmas before. Nope. I myself got into a Wii U. Yes, this is a plug for the most awesome game system right now out there with the best games. Because Aww. it really does have the best games for any system at the moment. At the moment. I, I, this is not a console war. I'm trying to start here. I'm just being very factual about the games that are out for a system. Okay? Don't take that as, as anything more than that. Anyways. Uh, uh, PS4, Xbox One, Wii U. If you built yourself a Steam box, which I, I highly recommend that you at least... Have check that out. Um, yeah yeah so some ability to even just to check on the free games that are in there that that's useful. Mm -hmm. Anyways, get yourself in that idea of investing in these tools, investing not just with money but your time into looking at resources. I cannot stress enough that if you really truly want to be landing. Your oppor the opportunities you set for yourself, the goals that you have set for yourself, and after you graduate, the only way through that or out of that is through more work. And that means more prototypes, more games, more tutorials completed. That's forget about the classes. The classes are well, you have to do them, otherwise you don't get our, you know, our stamp of approval. But pretty much. If you want your own stamp of approval for your own goals after that, that is going to require, not, it's not called hard work, it's just called work. Mm -hmm. Okay? It, it's it's just, like looking for a job. Looking for a job is also <laughs> a job. Yeah, it's, it, exactly. It's, it's work. Anyways, let's look at what that inspector and hierarchy does. The project has all, Unity has this thing where you have all the assets, everything that's in Unity, every single thing that's in Unity is going to be stored inside these assets. And that's mm -hmm. a folder inside the folder that, that you create when you create your, your new uh, game or new project. Okay? It has a main camera. If you want to focus on anything, you press F, and it'll focus on that thing. I, re I recommend that you have a mouse. Um, the trackpad is not necessarily... Unity is not made for a trackpad. And that way, Maya is not made for a trackpad. And that way, 3D Studio Max is not made for a trackpad. It's mostly mouse, for, so that you can have both all three buttons working at the same time. Anyways. As you notice that when I clicked on the camera by either selecting here on the hierarchy or clicking on the scene, the inspector came up with a whole <laughs> bunch of different things. And, there it says transform the position, rotation, and scale. That's a matrix you're going to have. If you've already taken the math class, you know that the, the matrices are extremely important. Mm -hmm. The camera um, comes with different um, uh, components, that, like the GUI layer, the flare layer, audio listener, and all, all these other things that you use for, um, for where the camera is set up, how it's set up, etc. Now, 
let's put something in the world so that we have that thing that we're going to control. And for now, we're going to create a flat surface. Okay? And the flat surface is going to be put right in the middle of the world, and we need to see it. In order to see it, let's see where the camera is looking at. And that's the frustrum. If you look around, see, that's called the camera frustrum. That's what the camera is looking at, the near clipping ray, uh, uh, plane and the far clipping plane. Anything beyond that cube, uh, that, that rectangle on the back, is, is just not, is not where the camera is able to see. So if we rotate this object here and move it past where the camera can see it, the camera won't see it. It's just not going to be in the camera view. Let's let's show this. See that little camera preview? Yes. Okay. Well, let's move the object. I want to I want to keep the camera preview on the scene. How do I do that? Uh, okay, if you want, you can put the layers like I do. I have it on I think 2 by 3. Yeah, two by three, and it has the game camera and the scene camera, and you can see both. There it is. Thank you. Perfect. Move the assets down to uh, there. And if you okay, all right, proving that we can customize this very well. Mm -hmm. Click on camera, press F. We're in there. And the camera yeah. preview down here, uh, it's just too large. I, it's weird. Anyways, okay. we click on this object, and so, notice how we move it around here. It's changing like that, right? You see that? Yep. As I'm moving the object. So if I move it off into the distance, look at what's going to happen. All of a sudden, it's past the clipping range, mm -hmm. and it's no longer seen. See that? Hmm. Yeah. Or oh. it's there, it's still... It's still there, it's just out of the out of the camera's view. Is that sort of like a rendering distance or something? Like it, yes. the game yes. is... Yeah, okay. See the rendering distance, and that's where clipping planes, near, far. We can look at the cube that we have here and notice where it is on the on the Z. It's 60. The camera looks very, 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 very far away. So, if we were to put it, let's say, uh, 100, will it change? I don't know, maybe. Field of view. That's as wide as we can see yeah, it. Yeah, wide. The field of view. We can also change it to orthographic, which is like 2D. It's just not, it's going to be a, a, notice how the camera just changed to like a like a square instead of like a pyramid. Mm -hmm. Like a cube instead of, or a rectangle, or parallelopiped. Um, let's zoom here. Isn't that one of the, the, the new things that they added for the 2D support? No, this has always been like that. It's just... Hmm. I had never actually experimented with that, so I really don't... I haven't seen it. Yeah, that's just how the camera has always worked. Um, oh, okay. Yes. So we can make it shorter, we can make it wider, we can also move, change the size of the camera, rotate the camera. I don't think the camera, I think the camera is an exception. But we can rotate it, that's what Oh I mean. yeah, we can rotate that. There we go. All right. Size, let's make this an even one. Okay. Nope. Okay, so let's move the camera also to where we can see this a little bit wider. And let's make this cube star attraction here. Let's make it scale. 
No, that's not what we want to do. R changes the, the size of this cube. We're wanting to make a plane. A huge plane. Because that's where everything's going to be at. Okay? Notice what the camera sees. A line. A line. We're wanting to look... Ah, that's fine. Actually, that would be perfect. And move the cube a little bit down. Hmm. This looks supremely frustrating. I could see like misclicking or something or something like that, and just changing completely what you have. No, this is actually this is. I find that this is where it gets to be like really uh, fun, like the best. To, yeah, because. This is where you're setting up all the little details of, of how the game works. And and in that way, it's, I don't know, I, I find it, like, exhilarating. I don't want, see, if I move the, the object closer to the camera, it doesn't really make it bigger because it's not perspective. It's orthographic. If I made it perspective, now let's look at the camera. See? If I move this closer to the camera, see, it's making it larger and bigger. But if we move back to perspective or orthographic, still the same flat line. Okay, now that we have an object, uh, we know where the camera is at, and now we know where the uh, let's the plane is at. Let's make an object on top of that. Let's make our uh, let's make a capsule. All right, a capsule was made outside of where the camera can look at it, and we're going to move it so that it's near where the camera can see. Let's see where the camera is. Hmm. You'll see. There it is. Okay. And we're going to make that capsule a little bit smaller. And we're going to set it right there. Now here's where capsule has a couple of things. Capsule, if you look on the side on the inspector, it says it has a collider, has mm -hmm. a mesh renderer, which it, it absorbs lights. Let's add to the world uh, light. Create. Directional light. Yeah, let's do a directional light. Now look at it. If there's a light up top, and we can see where it's being... Uh, project it to. See how I move it around? It, it, it changes the direction of, of the shadow on that object. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, it's, I'm telling you, it's, this is already a game called Capsule. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't played it yet. And you haven't played it yet, but just, just you wait. It's going to be the thing to get this summer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have that. Does it have... Uh, I don't have any material. Is it a trigger? No, but look. This mm -hmm. cube and this capsule, well, we're going to need to add some code to it because we're going to, when we press space, we want it to jump. Okay? And this is where we go to add a component. The capsule's already there, and we can come here and rotate and do whatever we want. Freestyle? <laughs> yeah, or we can make this hold on.
Sure. We have a capsule up here, and we called it, let's call that our player. Uh, no, it's not a player. Player's me. Character. Okay? And we're going to call the cube the ground. Okay? See if we can... Um, I want to make a prefab. Ah, it doesn't matter. We're going to add a component. We're going to add a script. Say, uh, state machine. Create an ad. So it created this asset thing here. This is a um, some code, and you can see it here, imported object. And when we double click it, it's going to launch this application called Mono Develop. And in uh, just so you can see it, I'm going to put it here. My computer is breaking a sweat right now. <laughs> and this is the code that is going to drive that player. And the cool thing about that is that once we create it, once we create that asset, we can give that asset uh, into any other. We can do that for the cube. We can, instead of new script, we can say scripts. Look at this script that is done right here, state machine. You've got mail. And, but we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to do it for, um, for that uh, character. Switch back to mono develop, and these are this is where my my uh, my lack of knowledge on this starts to show up really quickly. <laughs> Update is what happens every time the the per frame. And that happens whenever the system's ready for it to work. Start is the init part of what the, the script does. And on this, this is where we're going, we're going to um, just mess with things. But we're going we're gonna to have to create some variables inside this class called state machine. A class is basically a place where you contain both methods, which are functions or procedures, and data for that class. So, in, so for instance, I'm a class called human. That class contains data. One of them is called name. I'm a human called Kayvon, right? As a human, I've already done a number of, I'm able to do a number of things. I can walk, I can breathe, I can eat, I can do all kinds of things. As Kayvon, I have other functions that are specific to me. Not everybody can do certain things that I do. Maybe everybody can, but that's, that's beside the point. The thing is that that's what a class is. A class is basically a containment of data and behaviors or methods. I have to add, yeah, um, Make sure that this doesn't die here. And you said you can apply that script to any of the uh, objects that are similar, like any other capsules or characters that you create. They'll all have the same. Whatever you make for this actual script, they'll be they'll have that too if you assign it to them. Is that what you're saying? Yep. I I basically once you create a script. Uh, is that that's JavaScript, correct? This is C sharp. Okay. I'm gonna do a new scene. Whatever. Hold on a second. C sharp. Um. Um. The screen share is better. Um, 
There we go. Is mono development, does it come with a uh, Unity? Yes. Okay. Yes. You get in the Windows side, which is, uh, the Windows side has something that's amazing, which is Visual Studio. Microsoft, people talk about Word being awesome and whatever, whatever Windows does that is awesome. <laughs> Basically, Microsoft does one thing that is better than no, than everybody else, and it is amazing. And it's Visual Studio. Visual mm -hmm. Studio is the environment in which you code, and it's so far beyond anything you can get that I, I highly recommend that you, you get into it. I installed it on my Windows partition, so and, and with that, I also installed the, the Ruby plugin so I can practice in there. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Here's, here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to... Uh, let me let me take a look at something. I had something here, which is uh, source. I'm going to do something. Hold on. I'm going to send it to me. Hold on one moment. Well. Oh, this is giving me an idea. What? Um, like a platformer where, depending on the time, the light gets affected and there's a day-night circle. Think about our Mario with day-night circle. Oh, yeah. Huh. Uh, Unity script. Um. Okay, so this is something that we're going to do. We're going to... Create this behavior to have a number of, of things. We're going to check for time, and we're going to say, yeah, let's actually, on update, why don't we rotate the, the, the light? Let's do that. Let's go. Remember the camera? We had that, uh, the, the light object? Yes, the, the, the. That's the um, directional light. Uh huh. All right. We're gonna call it. Hmm. The key was going to be ground. The directional light's going to be called light. Uh, uh, sun. Let's call it sun. Okay. And the main camera is going to be called the key two. Okay. So sun's going to be doing that. Let's see if we can get it to rotate. The way that we find things on Unity for objects in code <laughs> is the following way. Um, let's see. I found, I'm not so sure, but I found, I think, um, mm -hmm. a forum right now that it has day and night cycle. Uh, how, okay, uh, let's see if you, if you want to show it. Yeah. 
Uh, it is shot. You can check it in here. There. It's in the Unity forum. Okay, let's look at that. Uh, oh, how they do it. Okay, but they. Okay. Yeah, since I'm looking at the code, I I, I would have to install that and, and try it out. But this is a, this is same. This is I think way simpler than that than than that. We're going to have a number of variables that we're going to keep track of things. Some of them is going to be uh, is the player jumping? Is the player so a pool, and it's got to be private. Private means that only only this class has access to that. That's all that means. It's basically only Kvon has access to Kvon's wallet. That's what private means. If I Kvon is a human that has a wallet, only Kvon has access to that wallet. Okay. Here's the example there. A boolean means a yes or no, a true or false. Is jumping. That's it. When we're starting this, we're going to say is jumping equals false. Right? We're going to make another private. It's going to be a float. That means a floating point of a, a, a real number that is very can be very large. And we're going to call it time. Timestamp. And when we start the game, we're going to say timestamp is equal to time. There's a class of time. There's like the time that exists that the computer knows about. So the the list of functions and things that, that can make that can keep track of time. And if we look at it, we have capture frame rate, delta time, fixed delta time, frame count, how many frames have passed since then, since we started. And you look notice on the side, oh maybe you're not seeing what I'm seeing. Yeah, it's, I think I saw it. Okay. So if you notice time dot time these are, if yes, I stop no. at any one of these, it says on the side what it does. It says a, it's a public, that means everybody has access to it. Uh, static, that means that it doesn't really change uh, 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 in all versions of that class have the same number and time. And it has, says that it's a get, that means that you can get it. So you can just go equals time dot time. That's it. So when the game starts, it's going to tell me exactly what time when it start when it started. That's how we're going to keep track of time. Okay? All right. It's simple as that. We're also okay. going to check to see current uh, or uh, time passed. Anything, any separate word, we're going to put all words together, but this is going to be called camel case. That means that the first word is uh, small caps, and the second word starts with big caps. All right. So time... Is any reason? It's got little humps. So if I were to add time pass now, it was it would be capital N. Okay. And we're going to say every time it updates, time passed is going to be equal to what? Time dot time. Minus time stamp. See that? Oh, it's keeping, that's how to keep track of time, is that what you're saying? Yep. Yeah, I got We're you. Saying I get that. How long, how much time has passed since we started? Right, and the first one is the timestamp, and that's when you start. Uh-huh. Right, I get it. Okay. 
Now we need it in seconds because this returns like a really large number, and we're going to have to multiply that by a very by a smaller uh, value. So we're going to say times 0.1f. That means that since both of these are floating values, and this is a float, that means that this also has to be a float. You can't add letters to numbers unless you convert the numbers to letters or the letters to numbers. You can't add things that aren't, you can't add apples to oranges unless you convert oranges into apples. So a float is a type. So in order to manipulate or do anything to that float, it has to be a float. Since timestamp is a float and time.time .time returns a float or gives me a float, right? And the way we check for it is time.time. .time. Let's see what it says right there. Public static float. Okay, good. So far, so good. All right. Now we're going to say we're going to create momentarily in there a game object called light. And basically we're going to get access or a reference to the light that we have out there, which is called the sun, right? So in order yes. to do that, game object, let's see what it gives us. Dot. Find. There we go. Find what? What's the name of it? Sun. Right. Now, light should be equal to the sun. All right. OK. Now, whenever we want to mess with light, let's see. Light, it knows what light is. Dot. Oh, look at that. Activate self and hierarchy animation, audio, camera, collider, get component, get children, get components, get type, what type of it is it, get its name, get anything, layer, light. But there's one thing that we're going to look for. We're going to look for its transform. Its transform is where, which way is it looking at, how big is it, and where is it in the world. And that's the matrix. That's what we're going to need to have here. Its transform, what can we do to the transform? Let's see. There's a dot. Look at this. Rotate around or rotate. See that? And rotate gives me a function that has a number of different functions. We can look for rotate, or, no, we don't need Euler angles. We need to rotate just on an angle. Uh, whichever act, let's see. Oh, there it is. We want to rotate, I don't know. Let's say the, the, the Y angle. And we're going to say how much it's going to rotate. We're going to rotate it by Time passed, comma, 0, point zero f, comma, 0, point zero f. I don't know what this is going to do, but this is one thing that I want you all to get used to, saving. Saving, and now you go... He saves our lives. Yes. <laughs> You go over here, and you press the play button. And let's see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> but look at the light. It's rotating. You see how the sun's changing? Nice. It's telling me that all the compiler error has to be fixed before I do anything. OK, well, see how it's going faster and faster? <laughs> it is. That's because the time is getting longer before the time passed, uh, as the time has gone on, right? Oh, from the timestamp. Yeah, the timestamp, oh, yeah. one second goes by, that's only going to rotate it by one second times 0.1. But after a minute, it's going to be one minute times 0.1. That's a much larger value. It's going to rotate it by that. So I just wanted to show, see if it worked. The way to check for any errors is you click, go here, and oh, it's got a little God, console. That is awesome. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Okay. So you see? So now we have proof that this works. Yes, we have it works. proof that this 
rotates, we have access to it. It wasn't anything else, it was that. Okay, so that's good. So far, so good. So. <clears throat> Buttons. Let's see. Buttons, buttons. So buttons. All right, what else do we need access to? We need access to the actual object, right? So, okay, the object that we have is this. This is that object. The, you know, we gave that state machine to what? To the capsule, right? Mm -hmm. so the capsule should know itself. So that means that I can I can manipulate my own transform. I can change anything I want. I can say, let's see. This dot transform dot scale. Let's see if we have a scale. I think we should have a scale. It would be cool if we had a scale. Um. Hmm. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have rotate. Um. Let's see how I I know I do this because oh okay yeah there's something here we go local scale that basically means my scale and we can the scale the way that it works we have to set it to something and for that we have a vector a vector is basically if you know about that um, it's the a collection of values and we are look at it it's already no know, knows that we want the vector 3 and we're gonna say well we're going to scale it on the y axis on the x axis on all axes actually by time passed Okay. Let's see what happens. Save. I want to see something. If I do this. Yep. Cool. All right. I'm going to set up something here, which is to make. That way, I like this workflow a lot. Um, hmm. All right. So let's see what happens. We play it. There it is. See how it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger? It's going to get bigger faster. Okay. Let's make a jump. There's something that we need to do to the object over here, to the character, and that's to make it into a... See how it has capsule collider? We're going to add physics
But does it have a rigid body already? No. No, it doesn't. So the character is going to, we're going to add a rigid body. Rigid body basically means that it's going to have uh, basic physics. As you notice, it, it already says that it, ha it uses gravity. And since it's a capsule, we're going to look at what's going to happen. It's just going to fall. If you place it here, I want to give the ground. It's got a box collider. Is trigger. Um, and the character. It still goes through. Mm. How did I do this? Why are you making me look like I don't know this, which I don't? I was about to say, you just, <laughs> you said earlier you're going to fail. You're doing very well. Mm -hmm. I'm learning a ton of stuff. This is all really deep stuff, though. It's good. Mm hmm. It is dramatic. No. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to have to cheat here. I have to save this save scene, file, save scene. Um, what is this? Uh, uh, state. Okay, I'm going to open a different scene. Which is another one that I have another project that I was learning. Oh, here it is. Need to know how I set up this one here. Mass render, mass one, discrete, freeze rotation, pill object script, and floor. Oh. It's grounded? Is that what you need? Yeah, but I... Um, it's not just that. I mean, this is all Greek right now anyway. I'm just looking for keywords. <laughs> oh, I understand, but that's, it's, this is, that's not what's guiding that. That's the problem. The problem is that Unity, oh, on that scene over there, I need to be able to set up the capsule to stop. And I think it has to do with the mesh render, not the mesh render, but the um, rigid body that it has. Um, non discrete, that's set differently, but that's I know why that's set up. Mm. Okay. Mm. 
No, I wasn't into that. Nope. Workshop. Okay. I see. Back to our scene right here. Let's not change its its size for now. Hmm. Maybe it's not even on the on the. Um, let's look at the camera. Akitu, where where is this object? I think that might be it. And if it is, it'll be really funny. Why is it not stopping? <laughs> I don't think this has to have rigid bodies. It's falling, which is good. But it's not stopping in the board. Mm-hmm. Wait. Apparently my um my capsule is on top of the board. Is it? Yeah, and I didn't change anything. I just added the rigid body, and it's, like, right there. Okay, let's remove component. Let's add component. This character. Ooh. Well, and there it goes. It just falls down. And it just keeps growing and growing yeah, and growing. <laughs> oh, God. Huh. One can, one can easily do it and earn animation with that. Yeah. Do you have a, a rigid body on the ground, right? Uh, not on the ground, rather on the character. Box collider. Okay, try, you can check, as I have it on screen share, uh, you can check if there's anything in the, in the inspector that doesn't make sense to you. Let me see. Capsule collider. Is trigger no. But it stops right there. Did you let it? Did, did it fall? Yeah. Look. Okay. If I let it fall on the on you mean on the on the table or whatever? Yeah. yeah. There. Bing. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to do, and I know that it's supposed to do that. <laughs> uh. 
I'll it's look confusing, at but I know it works. <laughs> you look at it. Just look at it. <laughs> You're back. Just give me a second. Be right back. Okay. Okay, let's do the other thing that I know to do. Do a new one. This time it's going to be a ball. Now we're going to the sphere. We're going to give it a collider. Let's play it. Huh. And, and it's doing it now. I don't know. Hey. hey, yeah. So now we're going to add, we're going to drop it like this. Right onto that one, boom. It's added that script. And let's see if we're playing the script and it goes through. Nope, there it is. Okay, we have a sphere. Doesn't matter. We're going to call it a character, anyways. <laughs> Okay, let's make this thing jump. It's jumping. Update. We're going to check to see, first we have to check to see if it collides, once it collides. Okay, there is a function called on collision enter. Collision. This is the name of the collision that it gets, like how it, it, it checks for it. Colliding object. It's a function, so it'll, if anything is colliding with that thing, it'll look for that function in this class and it'll call that function. So we have to check to see if the collision that is if what it is colliding with that collision object is the ground okay because we don't want to collide with another ball we just want to collide with the ground if it's actually you know what uh, it needs to be a pill it doesn't matter right now but it needs to. It, it will be a pill, and out because remember that diagram that we had. It had standing, it had falling, it had it laying on the ground and yeah. jumping. So we're wanting to do something like that, and that's how we're going to try and represent those states. So if colliding object dot uh, if colliding object.
dot game object dot tag that's something that we have to set up over there equals ground sorry Um, you put the equal sign twice. You mean is that? That's correct. And okay. the semicolon is incorrect. It's the this one. The equal sign e means compare. The single equal sign means is equal to. Okay. 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 This is is it equal to assignment operator? Assign what's on the right to what's on the left is equal to. Okay? Then now, if it's colliding with the ground, with that object, and it's... maybe tag is one of the... let me see if game object... Uh, let's see if light has dot... oh, for some reason this isn't connected anymore. It's not giving me the, the source. And we have to... Remember how it used to give me the dot transform and all that? That means it's disconnected and we have to connect it again. So we'll we'll get to that in a second. But first let's set up a, a system of tags. On here, you see how it has the name up there and tag and it says untagged? We're gonna make a, a tag, add tag, and we're gonna call it here on element one, we're gonna call it ground. Actually, that was which one? I'm not certain what you're in right now. Uh, I get to the ground. And on ground, we're going to tag it with ground. If we Let's add another one that says sky. And on sun, we go here, and the sun's going to be part of the sky. Ground's going to be part of the ground. Character's going to be part of... Let's say player. Look at it. See? So now we can search for them by name or we can search for them by tag. Imagine that we had a game that we wanted to destroy everything that's on the sky. We, we want to search for everything that's above the ground and then take it off the scene. Or do we just say, hey, is there anything called sky? If it's called sky, take it off. <laughs> Okay? So that's how we're going to do that here. We're going to check to see if something is the sky and um, and now we're going to say, if it's colliding, oh, there it is. Thank you, it came back. Let's see. Uh, it's not giving me that part. Okay, whatever. Uh, is jumping. Is equal to... Actually, we have is jumping, let's do is grounded. We're going to have to set it here to something, right? Does it have to be in the order that is presented in, like, the first section? You know, it says, is jumping, is grounded, timestamp, and then under no. the blue chart, it says it in the same order, jumping, grounded, timestamp. It's a good question, but no. No, okay. that's, that's... I only... Good discipline and practice is, is the benefit of doing that. Okay. Uh, is jumping equals to true. Actually, is jump is grounded true. And on update, we're going to check to see if... Actually, no. We're going to check for a key. Hmm, check this out.
on the update, we're going to, when it updates, we're going to listen for the keys. We're going to listen for the keys that we press. What would be a good one for use for jumping? Spacebar. Okay. So if our character is grounded, right? Mm hmm If this is, when you check for is grounded, it's basically going to put whatever is in that variable inside of there. So basically if it's true, it's, if this grounded is true, that's what it's, uh, it's going to replace this for true. If, if, if this grounded is false, it's going to look like that. So if false, well don't do that. If true, we'll do that. Ifs always operate on whatever the statement in there results, resolves into. It's a, con it's a Boolean logic. So basically, if I have a shirt on, okay, you do have a shirt on. All right, well then, then, then what happens if you have a shirt on? If you don't have a shirt on, well, okay. If you don't have a shirt on, if you're asking that, then if you don't have a shirt on, do what's in there. Do what's true for that. Let's say that I asked, I if I you. do have a shirt on, the else part is the important part. Well, no, he doesn't have a shirt on. Well, don't do what it what you would do if he had a shirt on. Do what you would do if he didn't have a shirt. On. I see what you're saying. Okay, so basically, is grounded. Whatever, whenever I set that to uh, anything in the update, it's going to receive that and it's going to evaluate that. Okay, it's grounded. All right, it's grounded. Now, what do you do? If the input and check this out, there's It's in caps input dot get key. Which key? Key code dot space. We're going, guess what we're going to do to that, uh, to this object, which is me. Remember that I have a rigid body? Mm -hmm. The rigid body means it's basically a physical, actual, touchable object that uh, obeys the laws of physics. Rigid body, we're going to add a force to that, that uh, one. It's called just like that, add force. And we're going to give it a vector. We're going to multiply a vector. It's forward. Actually, it's up. Probably has a, a vector, but let's try it's forward. Times 10. I think that you're missing the uh, right bracket on the uh, if input dot get, uh, dot get key there. This one here. Uh, yeah, you're no right. one up both. Thanks. There's something that happens when you enter a collision, but then there should be the opposite when you leave that collision. Uh, bad habit there. When you leave that collision, and you don't have to have anything in there, it's just basically when you leave a collision, is grounded is equal what? False. Let's see what I can do to
Oh. Whatever, that can rotate forever. Doesn't matter. Let's see what happens when you play this. All oh, compiler errors. Let's see what which one is miss it's looking at. Oh, of course. It's grounded. If we press space, what should happen? Move up. Press space here. Nothing happened. Maybe it's too small a force. Oh, there it is. Oh, no, no, that wasn't it. Okay, so now it's landing. Yes. <laughs> okay, I just got here. <laughs> so <laughs> trying to make it jump. Hmm. Would using first person uh can be used as a reference to see how it you can make it jump? Um. What do you mean? I mean. You there is an easy, you can use first person to create a first person controller, and you can actually and it already has buttons assigned and space bar is the jump button. Can't you use uh, whatever it has and whatever script it has coded and use it as a reference? Um. So the first I don't use those those uh, controllers that it has. I generally make my own. And that that's that that's okay. I mean, you can still use it as a reference to see what code it uses to make a jump. I suppose. Yes, but it's this should be the only reason why this isn't working is because I don't know um, if it's adding. Hmm. We can do other things. We can say, for instance, uh, we can test this. See if it's colliding. If it's going in here. And right now we have the light to play with, right? We can say okay. light transform dot rotate zero point zero f zero point zero f. Actually, vector three dot zero. Okay. That should whenever we press it, it should. Oh. Oh, because that's, of course. Yeah. Is the light rotating? I don't see that rotating. It's not rotating. Nope. Why is it not rotating? Is it by default at the uh, zero rotation? Could be that this isn't being. Oh, of course not. Of course, it's not going to work, guys. Mm -hmm. Come on, seriously, you're messing with me, right? <laughs> we didn't have the new the script. Oh God, are you serious? I no wonder I didn't see the. The capsule like goes small and then start getting bigger. There it is. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Wait, what did we add to the script? I mean, we just made it add it add a force. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's here's see. something that I'm going to look for. The here's where we start setting the 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 state machine. There's something called an enum. Okay? And an enum is this uh, I'm gonna search for it on, on Unity. Uh, 
You can go to Unity Answers, you can go to Google itself, whatever, wherever you want, and you can search. <coughs> okay, void... Unity 3D in C Sharp. How are these set up? Oh, okay. Dang it. Position. And then... One second, sorry. Oh, ah, uh, I forget that I that I have to um uh, that I that I need to do the whole uh, the caps. I always forget those. The, the what? The uh, I'm 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 writing. Um, oh yeah yeah yeah. On the, on the script and I forget yeah. the caps and the whole mm -hmm. things. Okay. Um. What collision interface? There. Hmm. Ah, save. Let's see. Okay. Uh, void time passed. So I set up an enum. An enum is basically a list of objects, uh, of, of, of data. See if we can do this. Zero, uh, one. Hmm, wait. Enus. Enum. Oh, enum, okay. Oh, sorry. That's an array, correct? Yes. Uh, th it's not a, no, it's not an array. 
it's like an array, but it's a list of things. It's, okay. it's a list of things that you declared so that every... See how right now I'm accessing it? It's like a type of, of, of things. Oh, okay. I say my state is equal to all the character states that, are, that exist in the world, dot, whatever. If I say dot, well, it's jumping or falling. or It's got a value. And then I can uh, um, basically use it anywhere. Uh, right now, it's jumping. So one thing that I want to do is that if... If and here we have a switch statement. A switch statement is basically a whole bunch of ifs, and it's going to check different cases, like a like oh, if in this case, in this other case, whatever. So we're going to check my state, and on the case, let's say case that it's character states dot jumping. do something and stop doing it here on this other case character states dot falling do these things until there okay okay So jumping, um, we're going to say is grounded equals false, right? Mm -hmm. If it's falling, is grounded equal to false. We have to complete for every single... Oh, this is the that one. For every single one of the states, we're going to check. And let's say, uh, and this is where we start connecting that little map that we have up, up here. Okay. Let's look for that. Wait, break the false break. That's under false. Okay. We can change is grounded to is standing. Let's do that. Notice how we now we have to change everything else. That was named is grounded. Hmm. Oh, everything that says is grounded, change it to is standing. Yes. That way we keep to the states. <clears throat> We're not going to need it so much, but right now, uh, because we can always say my state is equal to standing, right? If it's standing... This is fine. Um, I don't want the light to continue to change. Mm. It's <coughs> punching. Let's do another if that sets up it if it's punching. Um 
Mm, I don't know how to make this punch. Maybe um, make it bigger. Hmm. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Uh, rigid. No, it's not rigid body. It's uh, transform that local scale equals uh, new vector new dot Uh, how do we send that? Uh, I can. It's the local scale. Um. X three zero F one point zero F one point zero F Um, let me see. Uh, punching. What would be a good key for punching? A good a key. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, space bar is already jump, so I would go for E. Yeah, E. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, here we check if it's not punching. Exclamation point before any Boolean means not. Check if it's not punching. Then if the it's E, there we go. Then, okay. Ah, haha, -ha. got it. So it's punch. Oh, I said, I said getting punched, not okay. Punching is one of them, it's state five over here in the map. So, hmm. excuse me. That's fine. Okay, my case punching. Default is punching is equal to false. These um, are things that we can set up. Um, I just don't need any makeup really, but I mean, if you want to doll me up, I guess. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Else, um, uh, 
What is it? Ah, I'm trying to do too many things here at the same time. If it's jumping, if it's falling, what do you want to do if it's falling? Um, Land on the ground. How about we just to test if if we can see things are 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 correct? Um, let's rotate it if it's jumping. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> if it's jumping on the case on this case, actually that would be correct. That's fine. Um, we're gonna say uh, transform dot rotate. Um, on the Y, not uh, Y. Uh, be on the Z uh, 0 0.0 F 0, 0.0 F uh, 15.0 F if while it's jumping it's going to be rotating okay if it's falling it's not going to be rotating transform dot Rotate zero point zero. Right? So actually, it could be <coughs> vector three point zero. Okay. If it's not punching, it's standing. It's uh ah. Here's a cool thing. Mm. Old state. We're gonna have another variable, which is the previous state. Actually, call it a previous state. You understand why I would have that? It's gonna reset everything. I, every time I change a new state, I want to change get the current state and then change to the new state. So if I was standing and I'm jumping, the previous state was what? Old. Standing. Oh, yeah. If I'm punching and I was falling or standing, I want to get that previous state so that I can go back to that. Oh, okay. So if you look at the diagram on the screen... You see how it has from jumping air punch back to jumping? Yes. Or from one to two back to two? Something has to keep track of that. <clears throat> so that's how we're doing that. We're going to set both my state. At, we're going to start it at... And we're always going to do this previous state is equal to my state. See that? Ah, okay. So when we go here and we uh, we say um, is standing, if you press in uh, this, uh, I'm always checking on the uh, for a number of different things. I'm checking for if it's standing, allow for input to happen. That's what, if it's punching, allow for input. If it's not punching, allow for input to happen. That, however, doesn't really change the state. The, the input changes the state, not the variable if it's not standing or whatever. The state up there does change the state. See, this section of, oh, let me, let me point to the code here. This is the state machine. This is the input that manipulates the state machine. 
Oh, okay. <clears throat> we can check. We can take all of this here. Take it off of here, and we make a function called uh, check state machine. Okay. Okay. And we we have nothing in it. And in here, we just check the state machine. You see that? Oh. Okay, okay. Now I'm getting it. Okay. And in here, in the update, we go, well, check the state machine. Call that function. Now the update looks a little bit cleaner. But the update is only about checking input. There are some inputs that are not really going to change the state. There are some inputs that are going to change something else. But anything we want to happen happens inside the state. So let's go back now to punching. Punching, or let, let's let's look at this one, jumping. What are we doing when we're jumping? Well, ro we're rotating, right? Yes. And we're saying, is standing is false? And we're saying, uh, is we don't really affect is punching. That that we don't affect by jumping. We can jump on the ground or we can jump in the air. Falling, falling. Well, we we haven't said anything. Well, well actually, we're saying that it's not going to rotate. Don't rotate, right? And is standing is false. Okay, we have another case to check. When it's punching, what are we going to do when it's punching? Well, when when we're punching, we're going to say is punching is equal to true. Okay, that's the first thing that we have to do. Okay. Because we don't want to. Well, all we're doing for uh, for the game here is. Uh, and we have to change this to a different pill. Well, we saved it. Doesn't matter. We can actually. Here we go. Create another one. Directional. No, no. We want the capsule. And we're gonna rotate it. Nope. Not that way. Okay, so we're going to give this a rigid body. And we're going to, one thing that we're going to do is um, freeze its Y rotation and its. X rotation. And let's see what happens. Oh, we got an error. Here we go. What what was it? That's a lot of errors. Uh no, nah, this is fine. I think this is what it is. The variable declaration for is standing is still at uh, is grounded at the top. That didn't get changed. I don't know if that's part of it. Where? Uh, let me mute my. Oh, is grounded. Uh, yeah. Right. It's not. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I don't know if that would throw the. Oh no! Absolutely. That'll that'll. Oh, 
Uh, oh, trust me. Yeah. Good catch. Um... Uh, let me check something here on the Googles. Happy year. Oh really? That's kind of lame. That's pretty lame. Okay, remember I told you about adding types to types? Mm-hmm. Well, that's apparently it. <laughs> hmm. There's there's the only reason Huh? Okay. Punching does not exist. Yeah, it does. Not. All these are basically in the character state machine, and I don't know why that's my state.
No. See, these are the examples I'm looking at right now, and it's exactly how I set it up, but I guess I have to look at the enums in Unity. And outside of the start as a private variable as such, then set it in start to And current private enum and options extras. Mm. Okay. This is what I'm going to do. I'm 